Hi everyone, it's Wednesday again. Last week we looked at uh, Jesus praying at the Mount of Olives and what that meant and what it means for us. Today let's look at the crucifixion, but not maybe in the way that you would be thinking. So let's get our Bibles, get your pen, pencil, highlighter, notebook, whatever you want, and let's get started. So I'm in Luke chapter 23, Luke chapter 23, starting on verse 32. I'll read it. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you were under the same sentence, we are punished justly, justly for what we are getting, or we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. <coughs> Today you will be with me in paradise. Sorry, that's a, we've heard that scripture before, but I want to focus on the two criminals in this section. So we know that there was two. They have done something wrong. They were thieves. And we know that for Jesus to go to the cross, he was placed in front of a crowd next to a murderer, Barabbas. And Pilate said, I'm going to give you a choice. We're going to do a crucifixion, and you can crucify this murderer or Jesus, who's done absolutely nothing wrong. And of course, we know the crowd picked Jesus. And so Jesus is uh, tortured before he even goes out to the cross. And then he is crucified between two thieves. And it's interesting that one is on his right and the other is on his left. So Jesus is in the middle. So Jesus can hear what they're saying. They can both turn their head and have a wonderful view of Jesus. Jesus isn't on one end and then the other two. So the one right next can see Jesus perfectly, but the other one can't. No, Jesus is right in the middle with one on each side. So they both can turn their heads and they can look at Jesus and they can see what he's going through. They can see how he was tortured. Now, Jesus dies within a couple of hours because of the blood loss that he went through. The thieves did not. They ended up having to have their legs broken so they would die because they hadn't been tortured to the point that Jesus was. So what's the significance of this? Well, we hear about it, how people are hurling insults. So people are gathered all around them. They haven't chosen side and said, let's take the side of this thief and let's take the side of this thief. No, there's people gathered all around and they're all there to witness this crucifixion. They're all there to see it. Some are loved ones. Others just want to see the show. And some, they just came to watch Jesus die. They've heard a lot about this Jesus. They may not be there to see the two thieves, but they're definitely there to see Jesus and watch what happens to him. And so all this is taking place. And the thieves are hearing what the other people are saying. And one thief takes on the insults that he's hearing other people call out. 
he continues to take a side against Jesus. He's going to die. And he says to Jesus, so if you really are the son of God, like get yourself down and take me with you. You know, get us all down. You know, quit saying you're the son of God. He's insulting Jesus. They're both going to die. And he continues to insult Jesus, even in his dying words. But the other thief, he sees something. He sees something that the others don't see. He sees this man who's been tortured beyond oblivion, and he knows he's done nothing wrong, and he knows he has. And he's like, if you really are the son of God, why are you doing this? Why would you not fight for yourself? So this thief knows he really is the son of God. And so he makes the comment, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Because he sees something the others don't. He sees something that the other thief does not. And Jesus' response is one for all of us. Today, you will be with me in paradise. So each of us has a choice. Each of us is like one of those thieves. We're either going to call out to God and say, remember me. Or we're going to say, no, don't, I don't, no, I don't want any part of that. And we're either going to hear one of two choices, one of two answers from Jesus. You'll see me in paradise. Or you won't hear a word. I want to hear that voice. I want to hear Jesus' voice. I don't want there to be silence. I wonder what it's like when you take your final breath. Everything around here in the world Will be silent. But at the moment that you take your last breath, the world is silenced. But heaven, heaven is shouting glory and praise. And the sounds that we will hear will be magnificent. They'll be glorious, unlike anything we could ever imagine. Today in my devotions, I came across a few things that just kind of fit, so I wanted to share uh, them with you. So this is from Jesus Calling. I've shared that with you before. As you look into the day that stretches out before you, you see many choice points along the way. The myriad possibilities these choices present can confuse you, so draw your mind back to the threshold of the day. Where I stand, where Jesus stands, lovingly preparing you for what is ahead. You must make your choices one at a time, since, since each is contingent upon the decision that precedes it. Instead of trying to create a mental map of your path through this day, focus on my loving presence with you. I will equip you as you go so that you can handle whatever comes your way. Trust me to supply what you need when you need it. I thought that was so beautiful and so fitting for the message for today. And then I have this other one, and I think I've used this a couple of times. It's the One Year Women's Friendship Devotional, and I have been using this devotional, I don't know how many years, but every time I read it, I come across something something new and different. And today it was a story about a missionary. Her name was Hannah Hunt Hernard. Hernard, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that way, right. But she was a missionary not because she wanted to be. She had a stuttering problem and she wasn't comfortable being around people. But she felt like God was calling her to do this. And she just kept listening. And um, she, she decided, you know what, if this is really what God wants, I, I 
can't do anything but. So she went on to become an amazing speaker and writer. And she led a lot of Jewish people to know God. Now, Hannah had a dislike, a disdain for the Jewish people. And she really felt like God was calling her to minister to the Jewish people. And she was like, uh, no, I don't like those people. I don't, I don't agree with them. I don't like them. Why would I do that? But she kept listening to God, talk to her heart. And she decided, you know what? I'm going to just trust you. And so she did. And so this was the thought for the day, and I'm going to read it to you. God's will is easy to find if we want it. Really, the only people who miss his will are those who have no use for it. The months and years may show us that we've taken a strange roundabout way, but if our hearts are right, our feet will never go astray. And that was a quote by David Roper. I thought that was just utterly fantastic. If our hearts are right, our feet will never go astray. Isn't that just powerful? If your heart is right with God, God will lead you where you need to go. So you have a choice to make. Are you the one saying, no, not for me? Or are you the one saying, remember me, remember me, remember me? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the message and for the reminder that you give us the choice to call out to you or to say, I know you not. And thank you for remembering us when we cry out to you. Thank you for holding us in the palm of your hand and help us to have a heart for you so that our feet do not go astray. We ask all of these things in your very precious name. Amen. I can't wait to Zoom with you all tonight, to see your faces and to hear you. Love you all, and I miss you to, to the moon and back. Bye.